We done, we've been whipped before I ever was drunk. <laughs> but maybe we're going to whip this fish this time. You got him coming good now. Yeah. But he's going to go away from here when he sees you, when he recognizes you. He's All still right. pretty deep, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, oh, he's right here. He's a pretty one, Kurt. Oh, yeah. We want to gaff him. Yeah. Where we put the gaff? Right there, right by, right by your arm. Get the one. Well, you can get that one. He, he, I'll be surprised if we get a chance to gaff him right now. Before I... <laughs> Look, that, that's a pretty fish. Yeah. Mm. All right. Look at that king. Ain't he pretty? Grady White Boat's reputation for designing ruggedly elegant fishing boats is legendary. Our attention to quality, detail, and customer service is unmatched. From our Fisherman 180 and Coastal Explorer series to the unrivaled Canyon 456, you'll find no boat that rides better and offers more fishing amenities. Go ahead, experience fishing at its best. Get the Grady. Hello and welcome to the Carolina Outdoor Journal. Well, today's program will take us down to the coast and the Moorhead City area. And Joe, we're going to be rigging light for kings today. That's right. The fall time of the year, which is probably the, arguably the best time of year for, for uh, big kings. Now, we don't catch any real big kings today. We, we really went out in early, early fall targeting king mackerel with light tackle just for the fun of it, just to, just to say we did it. And, uh, and you'll see the tackle that they'll show you in gear time, but it's... Uh, uh, the fall time of the year is the best for numbers, and again, as you get later in the fall, uh, they do get bigger. Uh, but uh, just had a lot of fun uh, up close to the beach. You'll see, we're, I think we're a mile or two off the beach, but uh, had a lot of fun. And the trick is rigging light for this, and we'll talk about that in gear time. Right, they, they'll share with us how they rigged up. Again, we're, we're using live bait, um, and, um, and just, you know, for this size king that we were catching today, it was perfect. You know, they gave us some good strong runs, and... Um, I just had a lot of fun. What about Donna's recipe now for grilled venison? That ought to be tasty. It will be. She's um, uh, taking venison and, um, uh, again, putting it on the grill and uh, just real tasty. Be prepared to take down a recipe today because I think this is one you're going to want to keep and get ready for some great fishing action here today on the Carolina Outdoor Journal. Well, Anthony, end of September, this sure is king time, isn't it? Oh, it is. We're fishing off Atlantic Beach, North Carolina, and have another beautiful day down here. I mean, just slick. Wind blowing just enough to keep us cool. Had pretty good luck catching baits. They weren't real big, but we probably got enough. Well, let's hope we don't have enough. Well, then, <laughs> I'll, I'll go along with that. We're fishing from real light tackle. I know we got one line out there that's 10-pound test. Well, maybe that smoker won't hit that one, but maybe the yeah. smoker hit the, the little bit bigger right we, reel. We got plenty of string in the box. If he strips us, he wins. <laughs> that's right? it. That's it. So. I see we got some frantic baits back there. What you got, eh, Kurt? I just got to look at him. Look like King, maybe eight pounds. Well, that's good. That's what we're here for. <clears throat> this light tackle makes them fun. Anytime you're catching fish, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, but I always like it on light tackle. There he is again coming up. Nice little king. Mm -hmm. Hooked right in the... He might be a little bigger than eight pounds, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> He's strong, ain't he? Not quite ready yet, is he? That was a nice king there, Kurt. All right, see that knot in the line on the mono? Yep. Below that's 40 pound test. Everything, All right, so everything I, above that's 15. So I'm going to grab that and we're going to do a quick release All on right. it. All right. Good job. There we go. All right, Kurt. Got one. Really? Now it's my turn. I'll tie on another rig on this one. Oh, there he got is right one there. on it. There he is. Yeah, it's always good to see that strike. He bit this other pogey right in two. 
Maybe we should have had a heavier gear, <laughs> but we'll see who's going to win. You, you if we have it. line, we'll win. <laughs> Kirk, I'm gonna have to, we're going to have to go to him. We ain't got a lot of line on yeah. this real left. <laughs> yeah, you have. I hadn't been stripped yet. Go ahead and take that clicker off of that thing. You want to go around that outside the boat? Where yes, sir. Thing? i tell you what. <laughs> this is a light tackle here. Yeah, it is. You were but scared for a minute though, won't you? I was, but I think we're gonna get them. That's 15 pound test and it's an Ambassador 6500, so you probably got 200 yards. This is something like I would use in the river for stripers. That's exactly what I use them for a lot of the time. <laughs> versatile. It is versatile. But out here, you never know what you're gonna hook. Well, you can get whipped. <laughs> we done, we've been whipped before, <laughs> <That's> haven't we? <right. laughs> But maybe we're gonna whip this fish this time. You got him coming good now. Yeah. But he's gonna go away from here when he sees you. When he recognizes you. He's oh, still he, pretty deep, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, oh, he's right here. He's a pretty one, Kurt. Oh yeah. We gonna gaff him. Yeah. Where we put the gaff? Right there, right by, right by your arm. Get the one. Well, you can get that one. He, he, I'll be surprised if we get a chance to gaff him right now. <laughs> Boy. Look. That's a pretty fish. Yeah. Mm. All right. Look at that king. Ain't he pretty? It don't take anything but 15 pound test, does it? That's it. Man, what you reckon he weighs? 17, 18? Uh, yeah, I'd say he's in the 15 pound class. But class. Let's see if there's any chance nice. of getting that bait out of there. <laughs> you go ahead and sink your hand by I'm not going to trifle with him. I'll All tell right. you, we just leave it in him. Let's put him in the box. Okay. Good job. I'm surprised right. he didn't take another run when he came to the boat, don't you? Oh, I whooped him. You whooped him. <laughs> Good job. Well, All we got right. a 10-pet town pass rod sitting out here for you, too, now. All right. Anthony, what's your favorite bait for uh, these kings this time of year, early fall? Oh, you can get them. I love menhaden. I mean, menhaden is the preferred bait, but uh, you can't get them. Bluefish work well. Uh, spots. A anything like that. Almost any like that. Mullet. Yeah. Well, it worked great. Also, if you can't find any bait, then you pull some uh, dead cigar, frozen cigar minnows or, or some ballyhoo. I always like that live bait thing when a lot of time your bait gets frantic up there at the top and you get to see the oh, strike. That, that makes it exciting to see the fish sky right That's on the bait. Right. You want to release this fish or? We can, we can release them. Here he comes, Kirk. Have you had a look at him yet? I saw a little glance. Here he is, right here. Yep. A nice king. Look at him. What yeah, I he's, he's a 15 pounder. Well. Ain't he? Yeah, what, what I like to do is somehow take the pliers and cut the wire and let them go. All right. Boy, these fish move from side to side. Look at this nice king coming up, Kirk. Yeah, see if you can hammer the line. Grab him by the tail. <laughs> I'll tell you what, just go ahead and cut the line on him and he will. Nice fish, though. Yeah. There he goes. Look at him shaking. <laughs> Good job. All right. Anthony, did you check the tides for you uh, come out this morning? No, I, I didn't have opportunity. I knew it was coming in, but I don't know exactly at what phase were we in. I feel like we're kind of at slack tide right now. Yeah, fishing is slow, slow down some, and it probably pick up when the tide changes. But, you know, sometimes I just feel like you just have to have a bait in the water to be able to catch a fish. That's right. You got to go to know. Hey. That, that's it. Tide or no tide, just you got to got to be a, out We got here. fishing baits, fishing oh. baits. Oh, there he is. That was all right. You want me to pull us out of gear? Uh, yeah, probably just swing around a little bit to your left. Oh, to excuse left. me, to, to your right. Okay. <laughs> I was looking at, at my left. I know. 
That's why they got the port and starboard thing going on. Sometimes I can't think that fast. Well, so much I, for the uh, slack tide theory, right? That's it. <laughs> I mean, when you have a fish on, you, <laughs> sometimes it, you just don't think about every, everything. That's right. <laughs> so. We were looking for excuses a little early. That didn't look like as big a fish. I got a decent look at him. That's a fish. That's right. But that's I could have just seen part of him. That's it. Maybe you just saw it ahead. And we bump it out of gear now? Yeah, yeah. Tell you what, those engines are sure are quiet. They let, let you sneak up on a fish, won't they? Yeah, that's right. It makes it, it makes it mighty enjoyable fishing when it's so quiet like that without hearing the... Hearing that with no smoke. That's right, no smoke. I'm going to be looking at him pretty soon. Try to gaff him in the head now. Here he is. All right. I don't like going across that line, Anthony. I'm going to get a better shot than that. Okay. Because if I happen to miss, I'd love to be knocked him off. Oh, man. Nice king, Kirk. I believe he's the smallest one we've got, but he'll probably be a little better eating. True. There we go. Nice king. Yeah, pretty fish. Pretty fish. It is. Let's put him in the box. All right. Anthony, we're getting in the time of year you love to catch some nice kings, aren't you? Oh, that's it. I mean, this time of the year you catch anything from the small school kings from 8 to 10 pounds all the way up to 40, 45 pounds. I'd like to see a 45 pounder today, only not on that 10 or 15 pound test line. Yeah, I think they're out here. We just got this. Got to wait our turn for the bite. They'll be biting right on until uh, December, won't they? Well, uh, in December, they're more off, offshore on the east side, mainly like the tanker or the 1700 rock, but uh, th this is nice because you're only two miles from shore. Yeah. No, Man. no doubt that's a king master. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, he come up beautiful. I mean, he's smoking it. I'm trying to hurt, turn that way to lead to him. I'm going to take that clicker off. It never fails whenever you grab a little food to eat. I saw that bait come up and I put the peanuts down. Man, he smoked it, didn't he? <laughs> he wasn't fooling around. <laughs> he wasn't fooling around. You can tell that those light rods are getting more bites, more action than the, than the heavier rods. I believe it's got to do with the light line and I don't run much wire on. That's just tied directly, not but about less than a foot of wire on them. I've always liked that rig. Yeah, it works good. Well, maybe it's in that prop wash. I mean, the prop wash brings up a lot of fish too. So we've been fishing these rods a little shorter, just so it gives us an extra uh, 20, yards of, <laughs> 20 yards of line. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good strike right there. And I looked, I saw that bait come up and I wasn't sure if he was, uh, you know, just getting tired. And about time. When, when I saw him roll up on top and flip out of the water, and then that king just <laughs> nailed him. I thought you were getting them, Kurt. I was, but you know he's gonna take that second run. Tell you what, that's that's great action. There out he goes. Here. Look at him smoking out of there. <laughs> he might get under the boat a little bit there for us. Look at that pretty king. Yeah. There he is. Nice, pretty king. Yeah, well, he's 12, 15 pounds, isn't he? Sure. Can't ask for anything better Appreciate than that. It. Nice job gaffing him. Nice king. Gaffed him in the head so we won't lose much much meat when we Hold clean him. Well, he's nice, isn't he? <laughs> if he doesn't bite me, I'll... there you go. We saved that there. rig we were liking. That's a nice king. They had good fish this time of year. See how that, that smoke and run. See how that dip in the lateral line right yeah, here? Yeah, right here. Yeah. That, that identifies him as a king over a Spanish right. when they're smaller. Plus so. a Spanish on his dorsal right here is always, well, they got a different, their dorsal folds up further and is always, no, it's this one right here. It's always black right on the front. True. That and, king's and, gray right through there, but a Spanish always is black on those first two bones there. Yeah. But anyway, that's a nice king. Good yeah. job. We have a fish stew with him. <laughs> Joe, that was a good day of fishing. Now, if you're going just for the sport of it, 
you need to rig light. Well, and that's what we did that day. Uh, we knew about what size kings were out there. We had some advance notice. And, and as I said earlier, the later in the season, they're going to get bigger. So you don't want to go out there with too light a tackle if you're going to be targeting you know, 30, 40, 50 pound king mackerel. But these, these were small kings, you know, under 20 pounds. And so we purposely rigged light for them. Uh, we didn't have any problem with bait. We had plenty of bait that day. As you can see, we were right off the beach a couple of miles. Um, and that's the thing about it, that king mackerel fishery in the fall will offer small boat owners the opportunity to go out and really have some, uh, what I consider some world-class fishing. Um, uh, if you want to feel a tug on your line and hear that drag screech out, uh, the king mackerel uh, can do it on any tackle, but the lighter, he's gonna, you know, it's going to take a little longer to get him in, but it's, it's just a, a quality fish and we have them every fall. Well, if you're going to be fishing just for the sport of it, go rig light. light and let's find out more and find out how to do that on Gear Time. Well, Kurt, we had another pretty day on the water today. I mean, everything went smoothly. Everything went in our favor from getting up, getting to the boat, catching bait, to getting out here. I mean, as soon as we got out here, we were hooked up. Yep, I probably won three or four minutes, so we had the first fish on. We didn't even have all the lines out. That's it. Caught um, bait pretty quick. I mean, fishing, fishing, a uh, fall time fishing off Atlantic Beach is, is hard to beat. I mean, the king, kings are here. I've always loved catching some kings. It, good fast run, you get to see them make the hit a lot of time, your bait gets frantic, see them make that strike, and then they take that smoking run, that drag just peeling out. That's just king mackerel fishing, isn't it? That's it. Now what I really love is when I see them skying behind the boat or skying on the baits. I mean, that's that really gets your heart pumping. We saw a few free, free jumping today, but we never actually saw one free jump on our baits, but we saw a lot of strikes. That's, that's it. I like something else about it. We generally use light tackle. This is probably one of the heaviest rods we use today, and I'd say, what is it, 20, 25 pound test? Yes, yeah, so that's 20 pound line. Uh, that's a Shimano TLD 15 with a fast gear ratio uh, to pick up the slack line fast and um, sil silky smooth drag. Yeah, I tell you, that drag is a crucial thing when you king micro fishing. Yeah. Even some of the lighter tackle we were using today down to 10 pound test, line capacity and a light drag, and you can catch a king mackerel. That, that's it. The rods we were using, I mean, they range from your light rods, but something with a soft tip so you don't pull the hooks out of, of the fish when you're fighting them. Good point. A lot of times he's hooked in the side of the face and not necessarily in the gullet or anything. Just We got hooks out pretty easy. They didn't release right many fish. That's it. The terminal rigs we're using, get one up here. We're using Menhaden for bait, short piece of number four wire. Uh, these are number four trebles. I like number sixes also, especially when the bait's a little bit smaller. Yep, number six is a little smaller hook, and they generally use extra strongs. Yes, sir. And uh, But single strand wire, I like that because it's, it's thinner and doesn't have as much resistance in the water. When you say number four wire, what pound test? I think it's 44 pound About wire. 40. I got gotcha. you. But uh, you can hook them in the back. I like to hook them in the back so they pull a little bit deeper. But so, uh, there's always some that I hook in the nose. Keep so. him on top so you can see him darting back and forth. That's it. Yeah, we had a lot of good fishing today. Had a lot of fish on. Good success ratio. It was just a good day. Pretty day out here in the fall. Not too hot. I've really enjoyed myself. I appreciate yep. the opportunity to go with you again. Well, I appreciate it too. I'm glad, glad we can take off today and go fishing. Always a good trip. It is. Thanks guys for that valuable information. Now, if you're going just for the sport of it, you will want to rig light. Now, Donna's in the kitchen and she's got an outstanding recipe for us. And this is one that you're going to want to take down and try this one real soon. She's got a recipe today for grilled venison. Now, let's catch up with Donna. She's in the kitchen on the Carolina Outdoor Journal. Today in the kitchen we're making um, some goat cheese polenta and we're going to serve that with some grilled venison. It is fabulous and polenta is such a great dish. It's so versatile and you can add so many different flavors to it and give it different twists or you can 
cook it so it's not a wet polenta, that it's more of a firm polenta, and then you can mold it, and you can either, and then slice it and grill it, so it's really great. So let's go ahead and start, and it's very simple, only uses two ingredients, and then you can add what you like. So we have three cups of boiling water here on the stove, and then we're going to add about four ounces, or about a cup and a half of corn, yellow cornmeal, and we're just gonna mix that together, and you can see it's already thickening up, and then you can add a little bit more water to this. We're gonna turn our heat off. And we're just gonna mix this together. You cook it for about five or 10 minutes just until it's firm. And it depends on what the weather is like outside. If it's a moist day, then you, know, you probably won't need as much water. You may need to add a little more water to this if you'd like. Then we're going to um, add in some butter and mix that in. And polenta is very, it's on all of the latest and greatest um, restaurant menus. So you can serve this gourmet meal or this dish at home. And you don't, I mean, it's only cornmeal and water. So your friends will be impressed. And we're just gonna mix that together until our butter is melted. And then what we're gonna do is, if you want this a little bit um, thinner, we'll just add a little bit more water to it, but I like mine a little firm. Then we're gonna add in some goat cheese to this. And we at our house just love goat cheese. It has just a really nice flavor, and there's a lot of local goat cheese makers here in North Carolina, so we like to use those as well. So we're just gonna mix that together. You can add a little salt and pepper to this if you'd like. A lot of people do um, some olive oil to this. And this one is turning out to be a little bit thicker, but that's okay. And if you do like yours thick, you can put it in a mold. Like I said, you can spread it into a nine by 13 pan and let it firm, and then you can cut it, or you can roll it into tubes or logs and use it that way. Like this one I just did into logs, and then I just sliced it. And you can put it on your grill alongside with your grilled venison if you'd like, and just grill it up and then top it with maybe some balsamic vinegar if you want, or just a little bit of olive oil and some goat cheese. So we're just going to move this over, put this over here with our grilled venison, which I grilled to be about medium to medium rare. And we have our polenta. We're gonna add a little more goat cheese on the top. And then we're just gonna sprinkle some chopped, fresh chopped parsley or some cilantro would be nice. And you have a great dinner, an unusual side dish a different change from potatoes or rice. And it's a great dish, it's quick and it's easy, and I think you'll really like it. So I hope you enjoy the grilled venison with goat cheese polenta, and I look forward to seeing you next time here on Simple Cooking. Well, just as I expected, Donna had another fantastic recipe for us. Joe, let's go back down to the coast, talk about the king mackerel. If you want to just catch them for the sport of it, rig light, but there's always king mackerel out there during their season. Yeah, well, actually, you can catch kings, you know, back into the spring when the water starts warming up. Through the summer months, uh, you may have to work a little harder for them. They're smaller. As you get into the fall, as we said earlier, they uh, tend to get larger as it gets cooler. You, you know, the class goes up to, you know, 50, 60 pounds. I mean, the state record's uh, over 70. Um, but, uh, and they're available up and down the coast. Hatteras um, has them, you know, has a great large king mackerel uh, fishery in, in the wintertime. Um, but they're available up and down the coast. Um, uh, probably the most popular um, saltwater game fish we've got, just if you figure in the number of boats that are fishing for them, there's tournaments up and down the coast every year. Uh, a big one right there in, in, in Moorhead City, Atlantic Beach uh, Fire Department puts one on every year. Um, a popular fish and uh, so if you never tried them give them a try they, they, they give you all you want on, on any tackle but like I said we, we picked the lighter tackle for that day and had a lot of fun and it also makes for a great day of fishing in North Carolina absolutely for Joe Albee I'm John Moore thanks for joining us today on the Carolina Outdoor Journal make sure to visit our website for more information Grady White boats are known for uncompromising quality through exceptional attention to detail. On every model, from 18 to 45 feet, we incorporate exclusive features and quality components that you won't find on any other boat brands. Our exclusive CV2 hull design is ranked highest in every third-party survey done in the marine industry. So every day on the water will be a great day, no matter the conditions. Ask any Grady White owner and they'll tell you, get the Grady.